Well, I'm with Lee Pearson, or should I say Sir Lee Pearson. <laughs> uh, the big news of the last few days, uh, Lee, I mean, the many congratulations. What a fantastic honour of your, all your achievements. Yeah, it, as you say, it is an amazing honour to me as well. It's been uh, a very surreal month and a half once I received uh, the letter and, and keeping it quiet, and then it kind of went crazy the day before New Year's Eve. But... Um, I'm just passionate about equestrianism, about disability sport, and and, and um, it's a massive kind of um, thank you, not just to me really, in recognition, it's recognition of how we, our industry, it's absolutely brilliant, we're perceived to be kind of elitist, but I'm always trying to say to the, the mainstream media, no we're not, we have like three year olds that ride ponies, and we have 90 year old ladies that ride and everything in between and um, so it's certainly not elitist and uh, yes yeah, so I, I have a great uh, group of supporters behind me sponsors friends family and staff and, uh, and and it's all for them as much as it is for me really tell me about the day when the letter arrived with the old uh, palace stamp that was in a <laughs> special moment you thought what's all this about <laughs> yeah um, Richard my partner bought the Bought the envelope up to the up to up to my bed in the morning. He never normally does that. And he went, oh, I think this one's got a uh, important postmark on it. And I was like, Okay, I'm just going to carry on drinking my tea. I'm going to drink my tea. And then I uh, I opened it and he went, Well, I, went, I can't I can't say anything. It's a confidential letter. And uh, I was quite calm about it then. And I, and then and then since then, I've, I say I've been through loads of emotions because you never expect to become a Paralympian or an Olympian, you never expect to become a medalist, never mind a gold medalist, and you'd never expect in your lifetime to be knighted. So I've been through fear, shock, excitement, uh, loads of emotions. It hasn't just, everyone said like, oh, you should just be proud and excited, but it's quite life-changing. And, uh, of course, you can't really tell anybody, can you, for no, four not or five those. weeks or whatever? Uh, no, I'm um, celebrating Christmas and wanting to tell people, but you're not allowed to. But it's been really, really special, and um, and, I, and I can't believe how um, lucky I am, to be honest. And as a country, we continue to lead the way in para dressage. I mean, yeah. Rio was terrific again. Uh, you know, we, it's been fantastic for so many years now, isn't it? Yeah, and able body dressage is doing really, really well as uh, as well, with that, the likes of uh, Carl mentoring the team and, and Charlotte doing so well as an individual. Um, but power question, yeah, I feel honoured and lucky to be on the team um, and the squad of riders selected because... Um, yeah, we've been at number one since 1996. Um, the Power of Dressage has won, well, not just Paralympics, though, they've won every European Championships, the British team, every World Championships, and every Paralympic Games, and that's phenomenal. I mean, I don't think it's been clarified, but literally, uh, I think it is one of the most successful sporting teams out of any sport in the world. It's phenomenal, that's quite surreal. And for people perhaps who've never watched it, I mean, I've been lucky enough to do a couple of Olympics and Paralympics and the standard is getting higher and higher all the time, isn't it? Unbelievably so. I mean, when I started in 1998, it was borrowed horse competitions, so they were mainly riding school horses. Then for the um, Athens Paralympic Games, it was changed to own horse to be more parallel with the able-bodied. And so the host country didn't have to supply 120 horses every time we had a competition. And from then, when we first started with own horse, I mean, it was quite shocking if somebody had a dressage horse, because most of us were on very native type horses and very safe horses. And now, I mean, you need really a equivalent to national, international, kind of pre-St. George level horse. Even if the movements are very basic, you still need that quality of horse and the quality of paces. And then like the levels of Sophie Wells, who's a grade four rider, um, she has to do pre-St. George horses. And I mean, she's she's one of the first disabled riders to compete in able-bodied Grand Prix, certainly in this country. And that's the quality of horse we need, which that makes it more expensive. But at the same time, I mean, that's that's the game we play. I'm rubbish at running and skipping and jumping, I'm afraid to say. So horses it is. And when you look back on your career, it's um, you sort of pinch yourself sometimes because I mean, you, you cram a lot in and you... I don't think I dare look back, I get too emotional and you know us men, we don't like to have sweaty eyes and people walk into my house and in the dining room like the medals are on the wall and they go wow and I'm like what are they wowing at? We're like wowing at the medals on the wall, they're, like, they're a bit like ornaments, you don't really see them after a while and the horses are great, they keep you really, really grounded, you never go out to the stables and go right, Sir Lee's here today because <laughs> the horses will go yeah whatever, today's great day, yeah they're great levellers so.
and um, yeah, just feel really lucky. And final question: I mean, What is 27 hold? I mean, plenty of big plans, plenty of uh, ambitions. Yeah, I mean, every year we have a championships, so it goes Europeans this year, then World Equestrian Games, and then Europeans again for us, and then it'll be the Paralympic Games again. So. Kind of the whole focus is to try and qualify for each championship, but Tokyo, Tokyo has to be the aim. So um, I've got a few horses that I bred. I brought a Metal Broodmare about eight years ago. We've got her offspring now, and they could be in contention for, for the Tokyo Games. So I think we're going to bring two boys out next year, just maybe nationally and get them used to being within the live dressage boards. It's quite interesting planning so much, uh, so much ahead. And then I've got Z on that I'm going to carry on campaigning, who I rode in, Z in, in, in Rio. And then we've got a very talented black mare who's probably going to go Grand Prix and probably over-talented for para dressage. But I'm going to do some internationals with her and aim her also for the Europeans. But uh, I think she might have to find a, a new home in the future just because of her talent. I literally can't imagine her being international Grand Prix. Yeah, she's phenomenal. But uh, I'll keep playing with her until she leaves. A quick visit to the show today in Liverpool. What have you made of it all? Oh, it's so local to me at Stoke on Trent. It's wonderful to not have to travel to London. You have to travel to London for a lot of the functions and the events. And Olympia's brilliant, don't get me wrong. I mean, Olympia sets Christmas off, but you've seen by the numbers here, it's absolutely packed that people are on holiday. It's New Year. They feel like doing family outings and, and being involved and just to have something up north. Um, I have to have a word with Nina Barber, maybe get some power dressage here, even if it's just a display competition, because I'd love to ride in where into the arena where I can invite local people as well. But uh, it's phenomenal, and let's hope he's here for a long time.